Can you fill up an old iPod Classic with two terabytes of content? Well, the answer is yes, but what the f is on here? When I was a kid, I was glued to the TV. There's actually several pictures of me as a kid, t-shirt over knees sitting directly in front of our living room television. Though when it came to content on the go, we really didn't have many options. VHS was out of the question, and my family did eventually have a portable DVD player, though it was rarely used in all honesty. And while I wanted that video now, well, I already covered why that wasn't the best device. But fast forward to the introduction of the iPod, and my content dreams were coming true. Now, I actually have my original iPod video, which remember when these weren't known as classic? Dang, I'm old. And this thing hasn't been touched in years, mainly out of fear that I'm going to lose everything on here forever. Because I even have most of the old click wheel games that Apple used to sell back in the day, which are so hard to find these days. But just scouring through this thing brings back a lot of memories, but only 80 gigabytes of memories, which I know is a lot, especially for that 480p content we had back then, but 80 gigabytes is nowhere near near the amount of storage I need if I'm going to relive my childhood. So yeah, I might have upgraded just a tad. This is an iPod Classic that I had customized with two terabytes of storage. Yes, terabytes. Now I made a short a few years ago going over all this thing has to offer, and you all seem to really like that. And I get comments every day about the damn thing, so this is me going in a bit deeper and answering some of those questions that you all have. Now I will state that I did not make this myself, so all you people asking me to make you one, or how I made it, well, I didn't. I got it on eBay. And I don't really have like a go-to seller for custom iPods, but having been on TikTok a while since then, I can definitely recommend Elite Obsolete, which I will link their TikTok and website down below. But these days you can customize iPod classics to the T. You can do all sorts of different colorways. I opted for this like electric blue. You can upgrade the battery, which this has, then obviously the storage. And then I've even seen people put Bluetooth and USB-C on these things. You can even put custom firmware on here to unlock some pretty crazy features to this 17 year old device. Now, why do this to an iPod? Well, why not? Like I know I could just have all of whatever's on here on my computer or just keep it all on an external hard drive and load it up when I need it, but that's not necessarily compact and ready to go all the time. And then there's partly the nostalgia factor of it all. I mean, we are nerd nostalgia and tech, though I do strongly believe that iPods were some of the best multimedia devices out there because they really are just made for media consumption. So let's start out this tour by showing you that this is legit. About two terabytes of storage, 7,672 songs, 7,801 videos, and 28 games. Now, obviously I'm not going to bore you by going through every single song and video on here, but I'll give you the general gist of how I use this thing in 2024. I will kind of skip over music because while I have over 7,500 songs, music isn't really what I use this thing for. Though I love popping open that classic cover flow feature, I always thought this was such a fun way to interact with your music. But video? This is where the iPod really shines. When I was a kid, I had my old little CRT TV in my room connected to basic cable, but when I I started buying TV shows and movies from iTunes, I wanted to be able to watch them on my TV. And obviously the iPod video is actually able to output to a TV via RCA, so that solved that problem. But I wanted to mimic TV as much as possible, essentially having randomized continuous playback, which is where a long lost feature comes in, the video playlist. I was obsessed with video playlists when I was a kid, trying to give the perfect watch order to some of my favorite shows and combining shows from other networks to essentially make my own personalized TV network. So upon purchasing this two terabyte iPod, I knew this was going to be the main use case. So I loaded it up with a ton of 90s and 2000s classics. And just an FYI, in order for video to be transferred to your iPod, it needs to be in 480p and sometimes needs to be in a whole new codec in order to be read by the iPod. And something I learned the hard way is that standard definition purchases aren't really supported through iTunes anymore. There used to be a time when you would purchase an HD video and iTunes would also give you the standard definition version to put on your iPod, but it looks like that is no longer the case. And even a lot of older content has also been upgraded to HD, so it's even harder to purchase content for an old iPod. But if you have videos that need to be converted, I recommend using the
using the video converter handbrake to do so. And just a little insider knowledge, if you are looking for an old show, a great place to look is Internet Archive. I was shocked to see how many shows are on there, and I'll link it below. But because the cloud wasn't really a thing when I started making my initial iTunes purchases, I was a crazy person back then and pretty much backed up every single piece of content onto this massive 100 gigabyte hard drive. And it's crazy that this is 100 gigabytes and this is two terabytes. We indeed have come a long way in terms of storage capacity. But all right, now let's really take a look at what we got on here. In terms of movies, we mainly have classic Disney movies, tons of Disney Channel original movies, and a ton of holiday classics, which if we actually look at my old iPod video, all of the TV shows and movies on here are actually Halloween specials. Halloween is my favorite holiday and I just wanted a Halloween marathon year round. And then moving on to TV shows, you might wanna sit down for this one cause we're about to enter parts of your brain that have been dormant for decades. Now I'm going to put all the TV shows I have on screen so you can walk down memory lane with me, but just some highlights, The Amanda Show, Boy Meets World, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Chalk Zone, Cyber Chase, Degrassi, House of Mouse, Doug, Drake and Josh, Figure It Out, Gargoyles, Jackie Chan Adventures, Kablam, The Legends of the Hidden Temple, Mythbusters, The Naked Brothers Band, Pepper Ann, Pokemon, tons of Power Rangers. A bunch of Spider-Man series. The Vancouver Olympics and a bunch of X-Men series. Okay, maybe I got carried away and highlighted a bit too many, but goddamn, just scrolling through here brings back so many memories. And some other videos on here are pretty deep cuts. Like for instance, obviously podcasts are everywhere now, but back when they weren't as common, a lot of TV networks and web shows released video podcasts, which were a lot of behind the scenes or even full episodes, which you could download for free. And where did all those end up now? For for the general public, who knows? But for me, they were all collecting dust on that hard drive. Like the old college humor originals like Bleep Bloop, the 2007 Disney Channel games, which the 2008 version is the only one that was officially released by Disney, which is the one you can watch on Disney Plus. And then Disney Channel also released a whole slew of actor interviews, as well as all of the Shorty McShort shorts and the movie surfers, all of which I have on here. And just like talking about it and thinking about it brings me back to such a simple time and I'm so happy that I was a bit of a tech head when I was younger and even thought to save these. Way to go young Colton. But now let me move on to these video playlists. I have about 25 different ones which in my childhood head that's like having 25 different customized TV channels. Like I have one for adult shows like Community, Mythbusters, Happy Endings with movies like Anchorman, Dodgeball, Drillbit Taylor. Whew, haven't thought about that one in a while. I have one that has everything, just movies, one for Cartoon Network shows, strictly children's shows, Disney shows, game and variety shows like All That and Who's Line, a whole Halloween and Christmas playlist, a whole Power Rangers and superhero playlist, and oh so many more. Now younger me when I would put together like the Halloween playlist in particular would also go and find Halloween commercials to go along with the shows and movies and kind of space them out throughout the playlist. And while I actually still have those commercials saved, I really couldn't take the time to divvy all of that up. So the playlists are sorted alphabetically by episode title to try and randomize the shows as much as possible, since unfortunately you can't actually shuffle video playlists. But then when you are good to go, plug in your iPod to your TV and it is seriously like you are reliving your childhood. and then grab an RCA to HDMI converter and bring those classics to your flat screen. Though quality is definitely sacrificed at that point, but it's not unwatchable by any means. 
iPods. Now moving on to those click wheel games. If you aren't familiar, iPods came preloaded with a few games. One was the classic Brick, which I actually think was eventually replaced with the game Vortex. Then you had Solitaire, Music Quiz, which I thought was super cool because it actually quizzed you on the music you had on your iPod, though that was eventually replaced with the revamped iQuiz. And then you could commit war crimes with the last preloaded game, Parachute. Then iTunes announced alternative games that you could purchase from the iTunes store and then load up to play on your iPod. These games were super unique in how they are played because of the use of the click wheel. And some even use just the touch controls too. And these are like real titles. You had Sonic, Pac-Man, Tetris. It introduced me to games like Zuma, Peggle, and Spore. And had its own game titles, like a whole series of Sims games, Mini Golf, Song Summoner, and Chalkboard Sports Baseball. And don't forget the SAT prep click wheel games to help you prepare for the 2008 SATs. These games were actually a lot of fun and a great way to pass the time while you listen to your music on road trips. Now, aside from where can I get this iPod or how can I make one, I would say a large majority of the comments I get are where can I find the click wheel games. And unfortunately, you can't really. Even if you had purchased these all that time ago, but forgot to back them up, I hate to say it, but those puppies are gone. There's nowhere to find them on the iTunes store, not even in your purchase history. Hell, iTunes like barely exists these days with all their different apps and streaming platforms. Now, like I said earlier, for some reason I had the hindsight to back all these files up, which is why I still have them and am able to play them today. But Colton, just upload the files. Well, I could do that, but you still wouldn't be able to play them. Just like any other iTunes purchase, the files are locked to my iTunes account and Apple ID. There have, however, been a small number of these games that have been cracked, and I will link that Reddit thread below, but it's not all of them. And actually, not all of them were compatible with the most recent iPod Classic anyway. Now, I would love to contribute to this effort to make them available. I just have zero knowledge on how to do so. But if you do, just DM me on Instagram and let's see if we can make it happen. I also did a whole short series a while back of all the click wheel games, so go check it out if you wanna see each one a little bit more in depth. And lastly, let's just get into some of the downright weird things you can do with an iPod Classic. Now, one of the things I remember doing a decent amount when I was younger was being able to change the UI. Like you could hack it to look like the Windows XP home screen or have it look like an iPod touch. Though this is something I am not going to do today because like I said, I am just worried about losing everything on here. But something that is fairly easy to do that I did do to this iPod was install Rockbox. Rockbox I would describe as an alternative way to access files and listen to music on your iPod. And now I am sure I have only scratched the surface of everything Rockbox can do. But the feature that kind of blows my mind is that it can emulate Game Boy games. Now, unlike the click wheel games, this is not the most intuitive gaming experience in the world. Cause it's not like these games were redeveloped for better use with a click wheel. Instead, your D-pad is menu for up, fast forward for right, rewind for left, play pause for down, while your AB buttons are between the rewind and menu and menu and fast forward, but not as a button, but as touch. Since the whole click wheel is actually touch sensitive. Now I'll be honest and say this isn't a great gaming experience, but it does work. The last thing I want to address about having an iPod with this much storage is the performance of it. So from my understanding, there's about 32 to 64 megabytes of RAM on an iPod Classic, depending on which model you get. And this is a good amount of RAM to handle the standard 32 and 64 gigabyte models. But when you start to add this much storage and this many files to it, the iPod does start to slow down a bit. And I've had a lot of people say that it gets to a point where it's completely unusable, but that has not really been the case for me. And I think it's because I have the storage divided out between the music and video. Like I definitely notice it freezing up and moving slower, but not to the point where I can't get to where I'm going or select what I want. Now, maybe if I had like 50,000 songs on here, it might start to freeze up more because the iPod was never really equipped to handle and sort that many songs. But yeah, I don't really find it to be unusable and it's not like it freezes up during gameplay or makes video or music choppy during playback. Really, once I get to where I need to be, the thing runs just fine. 
So can you fill up an iPod with two terabytes of storage? Hell yeah, you can. And it really makes it become this ultimate nostalgia machine. I mean, unless you enjoy taking new content and shrinking it down to watch on your iPod. I did look into seeing if it was possible to do this with the third gen iPod Nano, but unfortunately the storage is soldered to the motherboard, making it nearly impossible to upgrade. Though honestly, I kind of had to hold back at two terabytes. And maybe I'll even have to upgrade to a four terabyte version in the future. Thanks for watching.